Hey guys, what's up? Welcome to my channel. I'm Frank, and today I want to teach you how to chuck sick clouds remotely. This thing is super cool. It's a tiny wireless smoke, fog, vape machine, whatever you want to use it for. This thing can be absolutely crucial in making some certain cosplays or props and whatever you want to use it for, feel free. What I'm using it for, well, I'll leave you guys to guess, but I'm actually going to say you're probably wrong. More on that to come. Anyway, this thing costs roughly $35 to $40 to make, and you don't necessarily need to make it wireless. I'm gonna show you how to make the entire system, and at some point I'm gonna tell you guys like, hey, this is where you need to stop if you don't want it wireless, and then you can hook it up to any type of remote switch or circuitry system. But adding in the little wireless module lets you hide it in almost anything, and then you can just turn it on, let it go, and get a little bit of smoke, so it's pretty cool. Now, this is pretty simple to do, and the only th a prerequisite I would suggest is going and watching the wireless uh, remote control video that I just recently uploaded to give you a little bit better understanding of that system. Aside from that, it's pretty standard cutting and soldering, so you are gonna need a couple basic tools, and I'm gonna go over the parts list once we actually get started. And since it's an RF system, you can see over here, I have the, I have the controller in my hand. It doesn't need to be line of sight, it's not an IR, and you can hide it pretty much anywhere you want. So let's crack into this and get started and uh, I'll teach you how to make a little smoke machine. You know that's bad for your health, right? You're just gonna ignore me. All right guys, so I hope this is an okay angle. Um, I got the best view that I could for this. So you're really not gonna need much um, aside from the typical parts. First thing we're gonna need is a cheap little vape. And this is a little vape pen. I think it was 10 to 15 bucks on Amazon. It comes with a USB charger and the vape. Now, when procure, procuring this, uh, make sure you guys get a vape that has a hole in the bottom of it. Now, I guess some of them do or don't. You can see the hole right there. You just need to be able to blow through it. That's it. As long as you can push air through that, you're in good shape. And this is really what you need to be able to take apart. And we're going to break this down a little bit more. But very cheap, simple little vape. Make sure it obviously works. Uh, test it however you want. But yeah. Next up is a little micro air pump. This thing's uh, pretty cool. This was about three to four dollars on Amazon and it has two contacts in the back and then the little uh, air outlet uh, in the front. And I believe it, the suction comes in through here. I'm not quite positive, but don't cover up any holes is all I can say. Next up is the wireless transmitter that was featured in that previous video. This thing is awesome. It's about 15 bucks. Now this part can kind of be omitted and I'll talk about when we get to that point, you don't need to use the wireless transmitter. I just think it's kind of a cool little thing to have a wireless uh, little smoke machine. You can hide in anything, hit a button on and off, but realistically you're just power, you're just activating the battery system and that's all. So you can cut this out and put in a switch or a trigger at any point. And some uh, aquarium air hoses or air tubing. Now this fits very nicely over this air pump. It was one of those uh, um, suggested buys and this was like three bucks for all of this. I, uh, you can use straws if you want, if you want to get some, get kind of creative with um, plastic straws, but this stuff is so cheap, why not just use it. Next up, you're gonna need some spare wire. This is like 22 to 24 gauge wire. Doesn't need to be thick. Um, this will more than suffice. And some wire cutters. I'm gonna be using these nippers because I just, I'm used to using them, but you need a way to cut it. You're gonna need some electrical tape and you're gonna need some solder. Yeah, we're actually gonna be soldering something. There's really only one thing you absolutely, or two things, you absolutely need to solder for this. Everything else can be twist connections if you're confident in that, but you're definitely gonna need this. And a soldering iron, hopefully not the one you've been uh, using to melt plastic together and it has a nice tip on it. And last but not least, you're gonna need some JST connectors. These are two pin electrical connectors, male and female, and you're gonna need about two or three of these. They're gonna come in handy. Now it doesn't need to be this size, doesn't need to be this small. Pick whichever ones you want, but I really like these little guys. They have a pretty good fitment, but they come apart fairly easily. And the last, last thing, because I'm stupid, uh, you need base mixed Glysol. This is super cheap to get. Uh, this whole thing was eight or nine bucks on Amazon, and this is probably gonna last me years at this point. Um, yeah, this is flavorless, odorless. This is just the base mix for vape juice, and this is what will just give you some white smoke. Um, feel free to experiment with better or worse. That's totally up to you, but this is what we're gonna be using. Now, you're gonna need to get this battery compartment open. Now, don't worry, like just don't go hacking and sawing at it. But if you grab the top with some pliers, you can very slowly twist and then the battery will come out. Be very careful with this battery. Once this is out, please be mindful of it. Don't put it somewhere, you know, unsafe. 
Just keep a good eye on it because you don't want anything bad to happen to this. Next, we have to get rid of this control board. This is the power button for the vape itself. You can see it's still turning on. What's gonna turn this off, five presses. We need to get that control system out. So I don't need this control board at all. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna cut these wires out as close to the board as possible. And now we have our negative. And now we have our positive. So this is a live battery, positive and negative. Again, put this somewhere safe, make sure those don't touch. Next, I wanna gut this. Just rip this apart. Um, your system might be a little different, but I need to get all the electronics out of this thing because I'm gonna utilize this case. And hopefully yours also has a little pin in here and it's the, it's the um, direct contact that the positive wire was soldered to. And you should be able to push this right out. Now there's a hole directly through it and I don't have that pin in there anymore. Leave the rubber casing in there. Again, I'm really hoping yours is like this. Usually these cheap vape pens are all built the same. You don't need this pin, but you need that rubber grommet to stay in there. Now what this allows to do is screw into the case just like that. Next up, we're gonna need to pull out um, a little metal bar from inside of the vape canister. And you should be able to reach in there with some pliers or something and just pull it this out, just like that. It's spring loaded. It should just kind of be, it could kind of be fit right in there and it should come right out. Now we're gonna need to get a wire attached to this. Now you can solder it. What I was able to do was make very tiny nicks in the bottom of it and wrap a wire directly around it. So I've gone and damaged the sides of it and I'm just gonna wrap a wire around the whole thing. Now this is probably gonna be the hardest part of the whole build is getting the positive wire to stay on this thing. So I'm gonna drip just a little bit of solder onto it just to hold it in place better. Once that's attached to the, that part, you need to slide this back in. Now if you built up too much solder, it might not slide in. So you might have to play around with that, but that fits in perfectly. That part's done. And now we're gonna feed the, pos the positive wire, that's what the middle one is, through the center of that casing, and we're gonna screw the vape back together, just like that. Give the wire a little bit of a tug to make sure it doesn't pop out too easily, but that's good to go. Now to attach the negative. Now you can attach this really however you want at this point. You can use the old wire that was on the case. You can solder it to it. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna sh uh, cut off more than I originally needed, and I'm gonna use this hole that was right here Actually, there's a hole right there on the back, but I'm gonna go through the front and just wrap it around the case where the old solder point was. And this is the this is the negative. This is just the casing. Then I'm gonna drip a little bit of solder in there to hold the negative wire onto the case a little bit better. I've gone and fed both wires to the side. Now we have a positive and negative soldered to the vape canister. Next thing we're gonna do is throw just a little bit of tape around this to hold it in place, because I don't want the wires to ever be pulled on accidentally. And then we're gonna test. Also, while doing this, try to seal up that hole as well. Use some type of vinyl tape or electrical tape, but you're gonna wanna make that airtight as the wires come out of it. Good to go. Strip back the ends of the wires so we can test it out. Now, with that done, you should be able to take the positive and negative and just lightly touch them to the ends of the battery or whatever battery pack you have. Now, if the wire starts to heat, turn bright red very quickly, you have a little short in there somewhere. You need to make sure that the green wire, the middle center wire is only touching that little center pin and it's not touching the case. So be very careful. I don't, I don't suggest touching it with your fingers, but I can hear the vape going. Now without any airflow, you're not gonna be able to see it going, but it works. The vape canister or smoke canister is all ready to go. Let's move on. Next up is our little air pump, and we're gonna to need to attach some wires to this one too. Now, your little um, air pump might not come with it, but this one is marked red for positive. If it's not right, once you hook it up to the battery, if it's not blowing out air, all you have to do is flip the wires. So it's not the end of the world if it's uh, wired and backwards, but do whatever testing you need to beforehand, before you solder anything or make any type of permanent connection. Now, we can test the air pump the same way we tested the vape by using this little battery right here. You can see it moving, probably can't hear it. But let's check to see if it's blowing the right way. All right, I can feel it blowing in the palm of my hand. Positive hooked up properly. Let's go ahead and solder that closed. All right, air pump's ready to go. Now the next thing I'm gonna do is prepare my battery. I'm gonna take those little JST connectors and we're gonna grab a male, uh, female side, so the inlet, 
and we're gonna use this to hook it up to the battery to make it a little bit safer to handle. Now feel free to solder any connections you want. I'm gonna be taking this apart for other reasons later. So this I'm not gonna to solder together. Oh wait, before I forget, how are we gonna charge this battery now? We can't very well screw it into the charger. There's no way to do that. Before we move on, let's get this thing open and modify this so we can charge whatever we want. Take your little charger and hopefully it's similar to this, but you need to get it open. And whatever that means, be careful with it. You can usually cut around the sides, use a screwdriver or a knife and slowly try to pry it open. Now the inside of this is very, very simple. You have your little, um, little board that kind of regulates the charging. And then you have two wires. One went to the case and one went to the little screw port. We just need to replace these wires with another plug. So let's go ahead and cut this off. Even right here on the board, it says V positive and V negative. So you know exactly where your positive and negatives are. Go ahead and attach some wires to that. We're gonna use the same JST plugs that we used before. There should be just enough solder on the board where you can barely tap it and the wire should melt right in. If you need to add more solder, feel free. Now we're actually just gonna reassemble this board how it was. But first, I'm gonna make a knot inside this wire. There we go. Now that knot's gonna stop me from pulling this out too far and breaking the wires. You can do whatever method you want. You can wrap tape around it. You can fill it with plastic. You can fill it with hot glue if you wanted to, but make sure this snaps back together. And now we have a USB socket that we can plug into the wall and charge our battery. But we still need to attach the other side of this to the battery pack. So make sure whatever you attach is opposite of what you attach to your charger. So now we need a male. Make sure these wires correspond to the proper color wires on your little uh, battery pack. Now I'm gonna do what I can to kind of do some cable management and fold everything up and make it look nice. I have one connector going one way and the other can go any direction you want. You don't wanna completely cover this thing in tape, but I'm just using enough to keep the wires in place so if they get tugged on, it's tugging on the tape and not the actual um, solder connections or parts. Now, you don't have to do what I did and add a second charging port. This very well could have been the charging port, but that means you would have to take the battery out every time you wanna charge it. The reason I had I showed you guys how to add a secondary port is because I can have this now plugged in to whatever system I want, have it all wired in together, and then I can hide this little charging wire somewhere else, have it come out the back, and at any time I can go plug it in and start charging it without having to remove the battery. So I hope that made sense, but you don't need that if you're okay taking the battery out every time. But now we have a way to charge the battery and our battery's wired up. The last thing we need to do is understand this little wireless receiver. Now I covered this thing in detail in a previous video, which I'll link down below. So go check that out and I explain the entire relay system and how it all works. But we just need to let this control the power between the battery and the pump and the vape. But first, let's make this a little bit easier and get the pump and the vape connected together. Now, this is very, gonna be very dependent on where you wanna put this. If you wanna have this mounted, maybe in your glove for a, a reactor, you wanna have it in a helmet or a mouthpiece, wherever you wanna put this, that's where you need to decide. But however far this is away from this is how much um, tubing you're gonna need to run. So theoretically, I can mount this right here in the back of it, but then that's one long piece about as long as our vape I can mount it on the side like this, and that's a little more compact. Now there's one part we can cannibalize from our old vape pen. Now hopefully yours has a, a very similar system in it, where if you pull off the back, yeah, cool, there it is. Inside is a nice little cushion, and this was to help to stop the battery from bouncing around. I'm gonna use this. I'm gonna melt a hole directly through the middle of it. Wear, wear a mask please, ventilation. Just big enough for this rubber hosing to go through. So feed your tube through. Now you can do this with um, electrical tape. You just need to make a plug. And to make this a little easier, I'm gonna cut this open so I can just wrap the, the tubing around it. So now I have a little plug system and I'm gonna make the bottom here, I'm gonna cut this up a little bit so air can escape from the bottom of the tube. And then I'm gonna feed it into the bottom of the vape. Now there's gonna be wires and everything in here. You need to plug this up. You just need to get air into the back of it, into the back of the vape, and only it, it can't escape. I hope that makes sense. So you're gonna shove that in there. You can test this by blowing through the tube and making sure only air comes out of the back. All right, so I'm gonna need to throw some tape around that. Vinyl electrical tape, very good for uh, sealing up um, air leaks. You can use hot glue, however you wanna seal this up, good to go. We have an air inlet, 
and our two wires are safe. So for funsies, we're gonna attach the vape to the air pump itself. And I'm just gonna reroute the wires down the side of it. And we can mount it, I don't know. How's that look? That look good? We'll do that. Now I'm only gonna use a small amount of tape because again, I'm gonna be taking this apart, but secure this as best you can. Velcro is your friend in this case. Now, the other thing you wanna be aware of is you're gonna to need to be able have to refill your vape. You, just like charging the battery, you're gonna need to be able to access this, unscrew this, and fill it back up. So make sure you take that in the uh, thought wherever you're placing this. If I place this in the wrong spot, I want people to unscrew that. Now we have two positives, two negatives, and an air hose. You can wrap this right around to the air pump and make that as short as you want or need to. So I'm gonna shorten that up a lot actually. Now we need to connect the positive and negatives from the uh, vape and the air pump together. Now wire the positives together because we only want the pump to come on when the vape's on and vice versa and wire the negatives together. Now we can do a quick little systems check before we install the wireless receiver by taking our batteries and we can wire it up real quick and dirty, just super temporary. Throw some tape over those connections if you don't trust yourself and don't want them to touch. Now we're gonna plug this in and theoretically the pump should provide air into the vape. I know it's a little kinked. We're gonna hopefully it should work out. If not, I can just add more tubing to it. Make sure these wires don't touch and you should be able to plug it in and it should turn on. Look at that. It works. If you want, you guys can stop right here and this is your little little smoke machine. You can put this on a switch, a relay, any type of system, but I wanna take it one step farther and wire in the relay board. But this is the entire little system. It literally fits in the palm of your hand. And again, depending on where you're gonna mount it, just get creative with where you actually put the components and you're just getting air into the vape and this should be the inlet on the back so make sure that has a nice airflow and that's it but let's wire this in real quick now we're still going to attach the positive to the battery that's fine it's the negative we're going to interrupt with this wireless receiver imagine that this is the battery connection right here and it's already hooked up and working okay but we're not going to plug it in just yet now this relay board also needs a positive and a negative so we're gonna go and hook this up too. So all the positives go together. Positive battery connection, positive pump, positive vape, positive relay. Now the relay board is going to need a negative, so you can hook that up to the negative of the battery. And now we would need the negative from the pump and the vape to go to the battery, correct? But that's what we're gonna be interrupting with this relay. So pick a wire, doesn't really matter which one, we can do blue and blue. We're gonna hook the negative up to the blue and then when the relay opens, when the relay gets activated, it's going to allow the negative to travel through the relay, come out of the yellow, and then you're going to hook the yellow up to your negative. And that's it. Seal it all up. Now, everything's nice and sealed up. We can plug in the battery. And theoretically, it should work remotely. Look at that. On off. And now when we want to, we can bring it in and charge it without having to disconnect any of the uh, anything on the system. I'd really only suggest leaving this thing on maybe 10 to 15 seconds at a time. That seems to be the uh, going recommendation for vapes. Uh, maybe even 10 seconds, it'll start to burn the coil out and nobody wants that to happen or else you're gonna need to replace this whole thing. And uh, that's no bueno. Now you can get a little bit fancier in the end. I'm a stickler for cable management. So you can kind of wrap everything around and position it carefully, maybe get some Velcro, hold things in place a little bit better. And now you have a little handheld, doesn't look the best, obviously you put it in something, but little portable smoke machine. That just about does it for this video, guys. Um, I hope that all made sense. Be careful, please, when dealing with electronics and batteries, they always make even me nervous and I kind of feel like I know what I'm doing. So just take your time. Um, if you feel uncomfortable or not that confident or something, Maybe hop on the Discord, ask some of the members there for a little bit of help or somebody you know personally who can actually give you some hands on actual help. So just please, please, please be careful. Also, I definitely don't suggest um, carrying this uh, like across borders or through airport security because it doesn't really look the best. If you guys haven't already, if you could subscribe, that would really help the channel out a lot. I have a, little, a lot of these little tech tutorials coming out, a lot more in work, and I'm trying to always expand and learn more tips and tricks to actually show you guys. Um, a week ago, I didn't know how to do this. Now I do.
If you want more help in the meantime, please go check out the Discord that I mentioned before. Uh, we're almost at 4,000 members. It's a completely free cosplay, electronics, 3D printing uh, Discord where you get all types of help or just hang out and, uh, you know, chuck sweet clouds. Now that I think about it though, I am a little curious on what you guys think I'm gonna be using that for. So leave some comments down below, please. Um, give me give me some guesses, give me your best guesses. And obviously you're not gonna probably say like the typical Iron Man repulsor thing, cause that would just be too easy. It's clearly not for that. So uh, what do you think I'm gonna be using it for? And hey, maybe if you're, one of your friends has a really bad vaping habit and he doesn't even wanna lift his hands up to vape, you can you know wire him up a cool little system that he can just like keep on his person at all times and just constantly keep vaping. What could go wrong? Absolutely nothing. Thanks for watching. You guys have a good day.